Welcome again, Andy Roman here. Today, I want to talk about shame. Shame is something that keeps us down. Shame is different from guilt. Guilt is more about behavior, and shame is more of a generalized version of guilt that we've taken all the way to the level of character. We feel bad about ourself, uh, not just about what we've done. You know, guilt and shame do go hand in hand. And some people say that shame is anger turned inwards, which would imply that the antidote to shame is to be found in getting angry about some external thing. Um, because we really do learn to feel bad about ourselves. It's not like there's a baby born innately feeling bad about herself. It's just not how it works. It's a learned phenomenon. So I can understand with the people who say shame is anger turned inwards. You know, Sigmund Freud said that depression was anger turned inwards. And shame and depression also go hand in hand. So what's the antidote to all this? If the stuff that we end up with, that we swallowed, that we internalized, that turns into shame, feeling bad about ourselves. I know what it's like to go around in the world feeling bad about myself. It's not a happy way to be in the world. I I anticipate enemies. I anticipate bad things happening. I feel like I mess up all the time. You know, that's not a happy way to be. The antidote is to expunge ourselves from the lies that we have swallowed. That means it involves digging for the truth speaking the truth, living the truth, being authentic. And I tell you, once we live with a really low ceiling of depression or shame, the body responds by getting sick. That literally makes us sick. So to change our mindset, to liberate ourselves from shame actually helps us get well, which of course is my segue to talking, let me put it on this side, to talking about my book, Get Real, Get Well, The Power of Authenticity to Heal, which is full of stories about people that are making changes successfully to liberate themselves from the chains, the chain of pain that has been handed down from generation to generation. You know, it's time, you know, I'm saying this a little flippantly, but it's time to get pissed enough to say the buck stops here. Not only am I stopping it for my children, but I'm going to stop it for myself and return it to former generations and let that ripple go all the way back so that I, you know, time is a funny thing. It seems like it goes in one direction, but I believe that we can liberate even our own history. History is how we're carrying it within us. It's not just our memories. It's how we hold those memories that really matters. And the, the key factor there of liberation, in my opinion, has to do with emotionality. It has to do with the feeling level. You know, I want to feel good. And by feel good, I don't just mean pleasure, because pleasure and pain are part of the roller coaster of this dual world that we live in and the condition we find ourselves in. The real liberation, and I'm I'm thinking as I'm speaking, the real liberation comes from a feeling level where we actually are able to catapult ourselves beyond the duality into an original state, which happens to be enjoyable, blissful, joy. It's original. You ever seen a baby, you know, when they're not having gas or they're not hungry and that kind of a thing? Babies are naturally happy. They'll be, you know, thrashing around. But there is some original joy. It's almost protoplasmic level of joy. And that still belongs to us is what I'm saying. You know, I want it. I'm going to do what I can do to claim it. The good news is that it's available. We can, we can tap into it personally and individually. And we can help each other. We can help each other just get through shit and get beyond our own hangups and our own barriers. 
you know, the, the difficult part is we don't know the difference between our own beliefs and what's real. A lot of times we don't recognize that a belief that we're living through as if it's real is just a belief. So that involves challenge. Good therapy, real therapy involves challenge. And often we get so comfortable in the ruts that we have, you know, dug for ourselves that we don't like being challenged. Being challenged is like, ah, it's too much free fall. It's too much unknown, too much uncertainty. I noticed when, when my daughter was a little girl, I would read her bedtime stories. And she liked, we had a little bedtime ritual. And sometimes if I was eager to get on with something after she goes to sleep, I would see her nodding out and I would skip a few pages. And she would immediately wake up and say, hey, that's not how it goes. And then, of course, I would have to start all over again because she was used to the, she knew the story. She liked the familiarity of it. And unfortunately, we get addicted to familiarity. And when we're so stuck in familiarity, we will do extreme things to blast ourselves out of it. That's the appeal of addiction, addictive substances. It, it helps us, you know, get intoxicated. I, I believe we want to get high. We want to be high because our natural state is to be high and happy. It just is. And if we've drifted so far from that state that we have to look for substances to help us alter our consciousness to, to, get, to get back there. But I'm going to get a little biblical on you here. Even somewhere in the Bible, I can't quote the passage in the New Testament. Jesus is using a parable, and he talks about how to get into the king's house. He said there's two ways to get there. One, you can break in. You will get into the king's inner chambers, into the castle. You will see the treasure. But because you broke in, you're not going to feel comfortable. You, you'll feel like you've done something wrong to get there, which you have. Or you can be invited. When you're the guest of the king, everything laid out there is for you to enjoy. It's humbling. It's a beautiful thing. And I'm using that as a metaphor. That when we use substances and i'm not saying i've never used substances i'm not here to punish anybody about that but it is a, in a way it is breaking into the kingdom of heaven there are more direct simple human ways to get there without externals to to make the difference and that's what i want i think that's a noble path you know how cool is it that the noble path involves getting high you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a little inside secret here. I believe that the title of my next book is Get High, Stay High. I haven't worked on the byline yet. And, I, and I'm not talking about drugs. Okay, listen, thank you for indulging me in my rantings. And did I bring up my book yet? Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Get Real, Get Well, The Power of Authenticity to Heal. You know, it is not uncommon when somebody does deep inner work, they're high, they're really high. They're giddy with love. They're giddy with feeling good. That's where I want to live. That's where I choose to live. And I'm going to do what it takes to get there. I will do my inner work because I have tasted the kingdom of heaven. And I don't want anything less. Anything less is less, you know. Okay, thank you. Let's see. There it is. There it is. Okay. Peace out. <laughs>